order of service for Sunday, May 9th, 2021, sixth Sunday of Easter, Asian Heritage Month 2, and Christian Family Sunday. Selections of our worship service this week are taken from Worship Resources for the Centennial Anniversary of the March 1st Independent Movement, 1919 in Korea, and Kin to One Another, a worship service celebrating Christian Family Sunday. Quote of the week. I feel like we need to be aware of the ways we use and misuse Christian religious dogma, whether it takes us deeper into love and inclusion or it separates us. Sue Monk Kidd. Before we worship, we reflect. We use visible and invisible boundaries to determine who is part of a group and who is not. Boundaries provide protection and a sense of security, but they can also cause distrust and discriminate. When a boundary is crossed, it is often surprising and overwhelming to the person doing the crossing, the people witnessing the crossing, or both. In today's reading from Acts, the Holy Spirit crosses, actually breaks a boundary that defined the early church. The Spirit's gracious action astounds the believers who see that the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out even on the Gentiles. As we draw closer to Pentecost, Name the ways that the Holy Spirit has surprised you or your congregation during our time of physical distancing. Call to worship. Creator, parent of the human family, we gather to worship you. In baptism, we are called beloved children of God. As such, we gather to worship you. Friends, neighbors, siblings in faith, we gather in worship, in song, in prayer, in readings from your story, our story, in thoughts and reflections. Let us worship God. The children's song you will find on YouTube all God's critters got a place in the choir. Centering prayer. Loving God, we gather to celebrate your presence in our history, your peace in our community, and your love in our lives. We also celebrate the sacrifice for the nation, the courage and wisdom for the oppressed, and the resistance against the tyranny. As we enter into this time of worship, let us feel your light and your truth guiding us into your justice and hope. Thanks be to God. Amen. A new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, to work in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And now I would like the attention of the children and the children at heart. It started 
with a bowl of homemade mango salsa. I was invited to my friend Sandy's house for lunch. Before I left after our visit, she gave me a bowl of her salsa. It was very good. The next time I went to visit, I prepared a steak dish, filled her bowl, covered it up and gave it back to her. The love and food fest were on. I was invited to Sandy's for lunch. She had made homemade French Canadian pea soup. I love French Canadian pea soup. I left with a container of soup for my supper. The next time I go to visit, I will bring something and fill this container and bring it back. That is what friends and family do. They share. They make the effort of doing acts of kindness for each other. They don't have to do these things. They do them out of love. Today is Mother's Day. Families celebrate mums today. But what if, like me, someone's mom has died? She died in 2010. It has been a long time. Then what does one do? Well, I phone my mom's sister, my Aunt Ruth, and I wish her a happy mothering aunt day. What about moms whose children have died? Then what does one do? Well, my friend Carolyn, several years ago, had both her sons die within a year and nine days of each other. She feels very sad every Mother's Day since. So I call her. I get her to tell me her memories of her sons. I let her cry if she needs to, yell if she needs to, and remind her that she is still a mother and a grandmother, and her love still needs to be shared. That is what I do for my friend out of love. Jesus said we must love one another. Perhaps on this Mother's Day, we can think up some creative ways to show love to others, family, friends, neighbors. How much more beautiful would the world be if everyone did that? We won't know until we try. Mission and service. Make Mother's Day more meaningful, inclusive, and compassionate. Are you a mother who wants to make a difference? Is there a mother or someone like a mother to you that you want to honor? Do you know people who have lost mothers or mothers who have lost a child? Does anyone you know find Mother's Day hard? Are there people in your life whose untraditional family unit deserves recognition and celebration? This is Mother's Day. Mission and Service is providing a special opportunity to not only help families in need, but also reach out to honor and support our loved ones. Make a special Mission and Service gift this Mother's Day Christian Family Sunday. Your gift will help families in need at home and abroad supporting things like prenatal and parenting classes, respite care for families with children, medical clinics for babies and mothers, safe shelter and education for children. At the same time, when you make a gift online, you can do even more good by sending any number of free e-cards. The cards say things like, 
Mother's Day can be so hard. I made a gift to support families in need as I thought about you today. I hope knowing you inspire me to make a difference is a comfort. And the world needs all kinds of families. You are a blessing. If you are giving offline, feel free to borrow the wording for print cards. Don't forget to credit your congregation when you make a gift. Mother's Day is a time when we celebrate mothers, which is awesome, but not for everyone. For some, the holiday can be a sad or challenging time. We want to do more good by helping families in need and make the holiday itself more inclusive and compassionate, says Sarah Charters, Acting Director of Philanthropy. Charters is encouraging her family to make a gift instead of giving her the usual chocolate and flowers. She is honoring her mother by making a donation. Imagine if the church came together to give life-giving gifts, pray, and provide pastoral care and encouragement at the same time, she says. What an amazing difference. You can help make Mother's Day more meaningful, inclusive, and compassionate. Make a gift and send a card today. Your support changes lives. Prayer for Illumination. O God of story, in the beginning you created humankind. The Bible contains your story of love and encouragement and challenge to your creation, to your children, and to us. Today, may our hearts and minds be open to hear what your spirit is saying to us, we pray. Amen. Readings and Song. The first reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter shares the good news of Jesus with a Gentile soldier and his family, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Recognizing that the Spirit works inclusively in the lives of both Jews and Gentiles, Peter commands that these Gentiles also be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Psalm 98, the refrain, shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord with the harp with the harp and with voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. 
Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Shout to the Lord, all you lands. The second reading is from 1 John, chapter 5, the first six verses. God's children believe that Jesus is the Messiah and love God by keeping God's commandments. Thus the world is conquered not through military might, but through love and faith. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey God's commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey God's commandments. And God's commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The Holy Gospel is from John, the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. On the night of his arrest, Jesus delivers a final testimony to his disciples to help them in the days ahead. Here he repeats the most important of all his commands, that they love one another. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. What is happiness exactly? When do we know when we found it? Perhaps happiness is the byproduct of worthy activities. Perhaps happiness is the feeling you get from a job well done or from achieving a goal, or from being honest and trustworthy, or from helping someone out. In this sense, happiness is less a commodity to be pursued and possessed than it is a byproduct of noble efforts, or even more, simply a gift to be received. I think the same is true perhaps even more so, when it comes to joy. 
the close cousin of happiness that Jesus talks about in today's gospel reading. One of the helpful mantras of the yoga world is the invitation and imperative to choose joy. I regularly remind myself of just how many times I actually do indeed have a choice about how I view something, react to something, focus on one thing or another, knowing that each of these things can be an insistence of choosing joy over frustration, anger, hopelessness, and more. At the same time, and in light of Jesus' teaching here, it seems like joy is also beyond our choosing and comes to us often unawares as sheer gift. Jesus commands his disciples to remain and abide in him and his love for them. True enough. But he also just plain loves them. Enough to give his life for them. Moreover, he is pretty clear that whatever they may have thought, they really didn't actually choose him or decide to follow him or consciously become his disciples. Rather, he chose them. He chose them. Which will be critically important to the disciples in the hours to come. Keep in mind that this conversation takes place on the eve of Jesus' crucifixion. In just a few hours, he will be arrested, tried, convicted, and executed as an enemy of the state. He endures all of this in order to demonstrate the love he has for his disciples. And indeed, the profound love God has for the whole world. But that action will not only witness to Jesus' love for the disciples, it will also leave them feeling bereft, alone, and frightened. Which is why Jesus both urges them to abide in him and reminds them that what is more important is that they know he will abide in them. That is why he tells them that they did not choose him. Rather, he chose them. This matters, I think, because if it's finally up to us to choose Jesus, to remain in him, to obey his commandments, to pursue happiness, or to choose joy, then we are lost. We simply don't do it. Maybe we can't. We can try. And there is something valiant and noble and important about trying. But when push comes to shove, whether you're telling someone to accept Jesus or choose joy, you may be giving good advice, but you're not proclaiming the gospel. So this week, just proclaim the gospel to each other. The good news that God chose us, that God loves us, that God plans to use us to make this world God loves a better place. That can be hard to remember, especially in the midst of a pandemic, financial and food instability, a struggling economy, racial and gender tensions. In short, in the midst of a scared, hurting, and broken world. Not that God's choosing us is going to suddenly make everything perfect. Rather, knowing that God has chosen us, loves us, and will use us, gives us the courage to face the challenges and renew our strength to do something about them. Ultimately, we cannot fix, let alone redeem, this world. 
That is why that is God's work. Yet knowing that God has promised to do so can provide us with the strength and energy to work to make the little corner of the world in which we live a better place. When someone asked church reformer Martin Luther what he would do if the world were going to end tomorrow, he replied that he would plant an apple tree today. The future is God's, a gift given, like joy, to God's beloved children. Let us live that this week in that word and promise so that while we are invited to abide and obey and choose, and all of that is certainly good advice, we also hear and receive the good news that God has chosen us once and for all. Amen. The hymn of the month is in more voices, number 40. Never-ending joy. Prayers of intercession. Our faith blesses us with stories of others who have sought to live in life-giving relationships. As we remember those siblings in faith, remind us of your guidance and presence with us. Let us pray. God of Moses, Aaron and Miriam, God of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, God of siblings who cared for one another, offered support and challenge, celebrated together, worked together, argued together, and grieved together. We are thankful for their witness. As they have done, may we also seek to live in life-giving relationships with those we would name as siblings. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of Eli, Hannah, and Samuel, cross-generational colleagues, mentors, and trusted leaders in faith, remind us of the opportunities we have to nurture and care, mentor, and discern with one another in this faith community. May we embrace the trust that is offered and shared with respect, care, and humility. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of Ruth and Naomi, who embraced each other despite differences of race and cultural traditions, and chose to be family for one another. For all who choose to be family, may your love and hope be sustained day by day. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of Simon and Andrew and James and John, who left the familiar to build new community with Jesus and his followers. Though faithful, they had moments of doubt, of fear, of denial. In our moments of doubt, fear, and denial, may we remember to trust and to take one step at a time. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of Hagar, Abraham, and Ishmael. God of Sarah, Abraham, and Isaac. God of the complicated and the jealous and the broken, remind us that this too is real and that you walk with us through these troubling times. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of Mary and John, called to relationships that stretch beyond blood to care for one another. You invite us, too, to reach out in welcome, support, and care for one another. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Family by blood. Family by choice. Family by faith. We pray for them all. 
Lil Sheeman, Larry McCrady, Mike Fraze, Brooke Alexiak, Tracy Skoglund, Matthew Grossman, Lorraine and Walter Pockrent. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of the past, God of the present, God of tomorrow, help us to live in relationships that seek justice, love kindness, and ground ourselves in your love for us. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The sending song is in With One Voice, 795, O Sing to the Lord. Receive the benediction. Go into the world. May we all live as disciples of Jesus so that love is practiced. Go into the world. May we all live as prophets of the word so that people feel God's presence. Go into the world. May we all live as the people who gathered in the square a hundred years ago so that justice and righteousness are overflowing. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Amen.